Okay, you land. What's the refugee camp in Germany like? I mean, listen, man, it's not what you think. It's just a bunch of people that are trying to fight for freedom. You know, we're all uh, from Poland, from Czech, Czechoslovakia at the time, Yugoslavia, family, you know, Anna Maria, Miodrag, you know, the Staff family over here. And we're all living together. Every, they would come, they would drop off the food. You would go pick it up, the apple, you know, juice, all this stuff, milk. You would bring it in. We had a small little park. It was an army base right next to us. And so we would go and look over the building to see what the guys were blowing up in the army base. So, um... That's what it was like, and, and you know, you'd go to school, and they would look at you. You know, you came to our country, and you're making it worse because there was some, you know, a lot of things were going on with the stabbing, the fights, all this stuff. So, I'm a Middle Eastern guy. You automatically put that person in the. You can't blame the guys to be thinking that because there was a lot of that going on in Germany. But it was it was a uh, it was a different experience. How do you get there. to America? Uh, so we're there for about a year and a half. Eventually, we get the green card. And uh, we get the call, we're going. And it's November 28, 1990. We land in New York. Uh, I'm looking for uh, Rocky. I'm looking for Goonies. <laughs> I'm looking for Gremlins. If you remember yeah, Gremlins back in the days, I'm like, where are these guys at? I couldn't find any of them. Eventually, we got to LA. There's some Gremlins out here. There is some Gremlins out here. <laughs> and then eventually, we're to, we get to LA from New York and, you know. Now, Any idea why LA? Sorry. Well, I mean, you have to in LA. pay respect to Mecca, right? Which is Glendale. Mecca Glendale. That's right. what I, that was my thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Granada Hills, then Glendale. And then yeah. we stayed in Glendale for six years. Oh, yeah. wow. So was that, Everybody was that, looks like this in Glendale, by the way. Your parents' yeah. plan the whole time was to go to Glendale? No, no, no. Not at all. My, my, my dad wanted to stay, but my dad also had a sister in Chicago. So he would always come back and forth from Chicago. In 84, he comes back, he brings this tape with the best 80s song. So when we came in, you're playing the 80s music, it was sick because every time I listen to 80s, I'll go back to that tape. By the way, whoever picked the songs, I'm still trying to figure this out. <laughs> Marquita. Calvin Harris, Shazda <laughs> Khanum, you know, all this stuff he played, it was great. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, uh, it, it was a great experience. Was okay, a great experience. you're growing up in LA. You feel probably a little bit more comfortable, I imagine, because you're growing up around a lot of people who kind of look like you, mm -hmm. shared experience. I think at this time, there's a lot of Persians that are moving into Beverly Hills. They also left after the shot yeah. fell, right? So there's, so now maybe you don't feel as uh, out of place. Is that fair to say? I felt out of place in Germany. I didn't feel out of place in uh, No, in I'm saying in, in, in Absolutely, LA. you're right. Okay. I feel out of, out of place. Um, you're in place in Glendale. Yes, yeah, absolutely. The, the desire to be American, right? To prove your Americanness. Does that happen when you're a kid moving here, you're seeing the movies and you're like, I wanna take part in this experiment? Does it happen when you're in LA? I'm wondering because you go to the Air Force and I've always thought that like, that is a way of proving that you're willing to pay the price to be part of this amazing experiment. Was that your motivation? So, you know, the, the, the concept, the evolution of becoming a proud American probably happened due to a few different events. One of them, I would say, is as you age, whatever your parents sold you, whatever your teachers sold you, whatever the pastor's uncle sold you, then you find the contradictions in the arguments. And you're like, yeah, I don't know about that. Because in Iran, you've grown up in an environment where everybody says, mad, bad, America, mad, bad, America, death upon America. And they're flagellating their back and you're like looking outside here and these 10,000 men screaming like, why death upon America? It's the evil empire. It's horrible. Let me tell you what they do. They're, the war. they're behind all the wars and they do this and they're like, okay, maybe they're right. Maybe they're not. I don't know yet. Right. Skeptical. Let me find out for myself. Rich people are greedy and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute. What are you talking about? The only way you become rich is to help other people around you also become rich. You can't become rich by yourself. Most people that build a company that grew up they don't have 100% equity in the company. Mm. You have to share the equity. Other people come in. You have to have jobs. You have to recruit good people. You have to keep them. You're about to lose a guy. You don't give him that race. He's going to go elsewhere. You can't become rich by yourself. You're going to need other people that's going to help you out. So contradictions. Then I joined the military. I'm in the Army, 101st Airborne Division. It's September of 97. We walk in the unit. They say, there's a movie coming out. It's about our unit. As long as we can get it, we watch a movie. I'm all in. I love movies. So we go. 600 kids, when I say kids, 18 to 25. <laughs> this movie, you're gonna be the first to see it before it's public because it's about your unit. You have to be proud about this movie. It's your unit, it's the badge. <laughs> it's, I'm like, okay, great, let's see what this is. Saving Private Ryan. No. Let me tell you, no. dude, no. movie ends. We're all on fire, yes. emotional. <laughs> I'm gonna seize them, I'm gonna take care of my life. I'm so fired up about this movie. Then I'm coming out saying, you know what? 
I'm proud to be an American. Then we go to one of the military ceremonies, whether it was Memorial Day or Fourth of July, and I'm looking at these 40-year-old generals, toughest men in tears coming down, and they have a look like this, but they're crying because they lost a soldier and you know how they fought for freedom and everybody else kicking it, hanging out. They're not thinking about the people that had the hard lives. And I'm interviewing these guys. What was it like? What was he like? Who's your friend? Who's this? And he gradually like, listen, man, this is this is an incredible country. And then more and more and more as you come up and a regular guy like this with a 4.6 GPA, <laughs> 15, 10 SAT, <laughs> you know. All of a sudden, you're like, uh, man, you can actually win here. And then gradually, the levels to winning keeps going. And you're like, you know, what else is possible here? It's just like playing a game. I'm going to play this game out and see where it goes. And then obviously, I can sell this is the greatest country in the world uh, comfortably in many different ways. Results, freedom, you know, what we've been able to produce, why so many people come here. If we're a restaurant, it's a restaurant that's always full. Everybody's in line trying to get into this restaurant. Even when we're busy, even more people want to come here. Legally, illegally, risk their lives. It doesn't matter. Everybody wants to come here. So now, that doesn't guarantee this place is going to stay this great. Mm. You know, I'm having breakfast with a, 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 a very successful man in, in Hollywood, and we're, we're going back and forth. And the question that becomes, okay, so now what do we do? I got four kids. I got an 11-year-old, nine-year-old, six-year-old. She's going to be seven tomorrow. And I got a two-year-old. She'll be two in a month. We have a great life. But man, can you imagine? It's kind of like, well, I made my money. I'm just going to chill. I'm not going to put myself out there because I'm just kind of want to be invited to all these parties. I don't want to be not invited to these parties. I don't want to be not part of these networks. No, we got to do our part as well. So mm. I feel there's a responsibility now to, uh, to bring it from a different angle. You know, I'm Middle Eastern, so... I can talk to white, black, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, Asian, Christian, atheist, rich, poor, middle, upper, educated, uneducated. Let's talk. Let's hash it out. Let's see how many things we have in common and what things we disagree with. Give me your argument why. Give me your argument why. Now let's see what we got there. So I think that's, that's kind of the concept of what happened with the love for America. I wanted to ask you a question. When you're growing up, you come here. What's your mentality about how you're going to take advantage of being in America. Are you looking at it like, I'm gonna start my own business, I oh, have no capitalism way. at my fingertips? No, I came here not trusting America. I came here like looking at the white man like, I've learned a lot about you, Mr. White Man. You know, <laughs> I see you coming into school in the BMW and we're coming in in the used 79 Honda Accord hatchback, you know, that only goes drive, doesn't go reverse. Okay, you're, you're <laughs> special. You think you're better than me, right? So. Yeah. That, that bit of animosity or kind of looking at them uh, funny, that was there. There was nothing about I'm gonna come here to become rich and do this. No, of course, don't get me wrong. I was the dreamer since I was a kid. Uh, Wilson Junior High School, we're coming down Verdugo. I'd be the guy, say we're all walking down and I'd say, listen guys, question for you. Okay, you got one of four choices. Which one do you wanna be? You can be the richest man in America, Bill Gates. You can be the best athlete in America, Michael Jordan. You can be the best performer in the world, Michael Jackson. Or you can be the president. Who do you want to be? And we debated for 30 minutes. Who would you great. be? At that time, it would probably be uh, money because I grew poor. You know, I, I didn't have a lot of money. So it was more of that. And now, if I could jump 48 inches, then listen. Are you kidding me? I mean, it's not even a question about it. Same answer right now. You'd be the athlete if you could jump 48 inches. Michael? It's not just an athlete. Yeah, Michael, no, like, come Michael on, You're no. going to get the billion because yeah, you're Michael Jordan. It's Michael. Yeah, yeah that's... Right. I just want to make sure you were saying No, that. man, it's Michael. You know, it's, it's Michael Jordan. I would Jordan. never want to be Bill Gates. Yeah. yeah. No. Ever. I have zero interest in being yeah. Bill Gates. Most yeah. of those answers sounded unappealing. Which one? Uh, Michael Jackson, God, nobody wants to be that. Uh, Bill nah, Gates, nah. Jesus Michael. Christ. No, no, Michael Jackson. I, 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 I would be MJ. I'd be MJ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be MJ. Both of them are MJs, that. by the way. So which MJ are you talking about? Michael Jackson. I go. You Michael, Michael Jackson. Jackson. That's what I'm saying. That's like, insanity. Given his affliction, that, that's he has what I'm saying. pre pre yeah. knowing all of that. Yeah. I, I could have no. saved all those kids. He has a serious affliction. I'm doing it to save the kids. I got you. You guys are trying to like energy source, man. No, 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 no. It's Jordan, but then Jackson. Jackson would be second. I don't. Why though? Why Jackson? I mean, out of Gates and president, president, I don't want to be. Like, yeah, that's too much responsibility. Okay, that sucks. So that's kind of yeah. what the angle you're growing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like if you're Michael and you have aspirations to do the other two, you can. You know, but if, if you're, you're Jordan. Yeah, if, if you're, you're Jordan, Michael Jordan, you could yeah, be president. You, you could be president and you're going to be a billionaire. He is. He's not going to have a yeah. problem with that. By the way, did you guys watch the movie Air or No? Uh, not yet. No, yeah, oh, no, no, no. Gosh. Fantastic. Three times in the first week I watched it. Wow. 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 On we took the whole team to watch. <laughs> You'll see why. 